Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I'm going to start off with launching my aeroponics module with its little agricultural module off to the side, uh, getting its moon transfer done, and then getting it and the other two payloads over to the lunar surface. I don't know if I'm going to do all three landings in this episode, but I'll try to do as much as I can. Now this aeroponics module has to carry the fuel for the, for the orange slash pumpkin and so it's a little bit heavier than the previous launch with the Moon Master 1 which had its own fuel to make the landing so uh, that means that I couldn't put as much reserve fuel on this version of the Beluga as I did on the last one and but I've, I've, I've got a reserve fuel tank here I'm gonna shut off the fuel there and I've got the extra parachutes here now of course we need to make other fixes and so I did and what I've done is I have put radial air intakes to protect the floats and I don't know if this is going to fully protect them uh, right now it's flush I don't know if that's gonna be enough I also don't know if uh, the way I've placed them I didn't use any part clipping uh, it let me do this without any additional part clipping uh, it's somehow attached to the whatchamacallit I forget what the base is called it's the, the it's from procedural fairings I believe where are you it attached to the thrust plate. It's the thrust plate uh, multi-adapter, that thing. So that's what the radial air intakes are all attached to. I hope they're not too close to everything and, you know, things will blow up. I'm a little bit nervous about that. But the benefit of them is that, according to this at least, they've got a max temperature of 2,500. Now, with deadly entry, I think that if it's that high, it cuts it in half. So I'm, I'm expecting like 1,250 more like, um, but, uh, and that's important to know that, uh, that Delhi reentry does not like it when the numbers go past, that, I think it's above 1,800, though they might have changed that. Um, yeah, but that's still a lot better than what the floats actually had. The floats, if we could find the floats, these have only 800 so that's why they kept exploding like immediately and they're all 800 uh, even the big ones so yep hopefully that'll be an improvement we'll see and we have some stuff to work with but not a lot uh, the margins on this rocket are pretty tight now because I'm carrying the reserve fuel and it's still a heavy payload so we'll see how this works out so I'm still committed to trying this whole thing out now uh, another point was made that maybe the rocket will be unbalanced when it tries to float and we'll see about that. Uh, the center mass is high compared to where the floats are going to end up but but you know I'm, the only way you can figure that out is if you test it and I'm not going to spend money on a test unless I'm going to be launching cargo otherwise uh, we'd have to try and launch this and land it in the water uh, without cargo and if we lose it then we're gonna lose the full value of the stage without having done anything with it so I'm not gonna bother with that alright so yes I think that's all the important parts spoken for let's let's try this out okay it's nighttime launch but we can't uh, do anything about that because we've got missions already on their way to the moon and if we try and time warp through the night uh, chances are that they are going to reach there and I'm not going to be managing them and that's going to be a problem. So, yep, we're going to just launch at night and that's how it's going to be. So here we go, lining this one. Okay, up it goes. Tower clear. And it looks like uh, no particular problem with explosions having the air intakes down there. So now the main issue is what's going to happen on the way down. So it just occurred to me that I haven't uh, really made a Kerbin to Moon tug, a transfer vehicle that can bring payloads from Kerbin to the Moon instead of having each of these launches have their own transfer stage. 
and the main savings there is you don't have to bring the engine up every time and lose the cost of the engine every time so so I am thinking about that okay looking good looking very good actually I think I've got a better launch profile for this thing. A little bit shallower seems to work out better. Okay, I think we can dump the fairings. That'll save a lot of mass. And since we have the reserve tank up here... Uh-oh. Come on. Uh oh. Um, hold on. I, I it didn't reserve the fuel in the reserve tank. That's not right. Uh, okay. Well, I'm not gonna transfer any fuel. Uh, I think it's because I had to revert and take the kerbals out, and then it uh, decided to unlock that tank. All right. Uh, let us separate. Good thing I checked. All right. So main mission time, uh, yep, all right, activate engine and continue. I didn't have the separation boosters on, I should have added those. Yeah, the first time I tried to launch there were Kerbals in, Bill and Bob snuck in, so I had to revert and then bring it back out to the pad without them in. I say revert, I mean recover, of course. Okay, that's fine, 127 by 110. And it's all set to go. Let me just turn off Smart ASS and just go to regular SAS. And yep, that's plenty enough fuel to transfer to the moon and get into orbit around the moon. So that is all successful unless... Okay, it's not drawing from that tank. I wonder what happened with the other... I don't know why it uh, left this tank unlocked. Uh, Maybe the other one still has a lot of fuel. Let me see. Let's go back to the first stage. No, it did draw from the top tank even though I didn't want it to. Huh. Strange. Don't know how all this tank unlocking works sometimes. Alright. Well, just gonna... Well, I'll leave SAS off. There's no point having it on. We'll just draw electric charge. Anyway, we're headed up to our apoapsis again. So when testing these things, it's uh, it's sometimes useful to focus on just keeping... Well, okay, it's really going askew here. Focus on one variable at a time. And so I've added the air intake, so I'm, not, I'm trying to change as little as possible compared to my last test. Of course, the um, reserve tank is smaller. Couldn't do too much about that because of the payload. SAS is really not doing much. Did I, like... I've got a reaction wheel on here. Come on, SAS. Got 555 meters per second. We need to reserve some for actual touchdown. Remember, uh, we don't have enough parachute power to to really bring it down solely on the parachutes. We need to have some engine power to slow us down. So I can't really slow us down very much here compared to the last mission where where with the Moon Master it was a light enough payload. And that might end up being the thing. I might just have to go with a lighter payload and carry more reserve fuel for deceleration. That is an option. Just lower the payload specifications. Okay, I'm going to switch to service mode and decelerate a bit. Okay, here's some heating. Kind of slow down even more here. Whoa. Come on, already? Parachutes. Well, actually, that's alright. Uh, if it's the parachutes here, I'll just save more fuel. Okay, but something else exploded. More exploded. Uh, hold me retrograde, darn it. 
This thing isn't... Am I missing a reaction wheel? I don't get why this thing can't hold me. I mean, why isn't it holding me retrograde? There's some sort of imbalance. I think uh, if it wasn't tilted, I think the the air intakes actually work. But because it's tilted, it's not working out right. Actually, we've got all our parachutes. Okay, well, let's use them. Uh, oh, now, now we're experiencing the proper amount of... Uh, maybe it's the air intakes causing some sort of aerodynamic issue? I don't know. We seem to be rolling all over the place instead of hanging retrograde. We do have a reaction wheel here. Advanced SAS module. Oh, no, this is not good. Huh. Everything just fell apart. All we've got is the control unit. That is weird, I think. Also weird, why didn't those parachutes deploy? Well, hardly need them considering... Oh, well, now we've got a lot of reaction control. Well, that, 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 that was a... Wait a minute, why are we tilted this way anyway? Honestly. Oh, retrograde orbit. Okay, maybe... Yeah, I goofed. <laughs> You know, let's try that one more time. I think I goofed. Okay, when I tried that, the game crashed, but I seem to be in the middle of things here. I'm trying to control it manually. I'm slowing down a lot more than I did last time, but I don't know if that's got to be enough. Let's see. It's not really holding it, though. I think something about the air intakes throws off the aerodynamics. I either need more reaction control power, or I need some other part to shield the, the floats. Oh, wait. I don't know if this is a very good test, though. Uh, but we, we're clear. Oh, wait, I think, no. Whoa, whoa, why are we deviating so much? I Maybe I, sh I should close the... I, I need to action group and close the air intakes, I think. Uh, okay, what do we look like? Like that. Okay, waiting for a good parachute deployment speed here. Uh, we're pointed in a weird place. I don't know why. I really wanted to be a little bit closer to retrograde here. So this isn't a very good test because obviously uh, I jumped in at a odd time. I don't think all of the heating that could have been applied to the vehicle really was. And I think I need to action group the air intakes and shut off their the actual intake so that I can get rid of that drag. Alright, uh, parachute to one time. Mm. Okay, well at least that produces the drag I want. Let's hope the thing just doesn't randomly disassemble this time. Okay, second volley. Okay. All right. Tentatively speaking, if we can, I, I guess it's because of the drag on the air intakes that we were deviating from the retrograde vector. But it seems like the air intakes can protect the floats as long as uh, we're really pointing retrograde and not tilted. That's my bet, anyway. Okay, I'm gonna wait until full parachute deployment, and then I'm gonna have to quickly extend the floats. So it's in the dark, so it's tough to see, but anything like that. Okay, full parachute deployment, uh, extending the floats, extending the floats. Um, my keys aren't working. Extending the floats. Okay, now they work. It takes a lot of electric 
capacity here. Okay, I think that's all, and all right, that works. And I'm going to use some thrust to slow down. And SAS on. Uh, it floats. It floats, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that at least is a legit test. Uh, oh wait, it's deviating. It's deviating. Recover vessel. <laughs> okay, FMRS did not return me to my main mission, so let's see how that works out. Let's check. Okay, well, it shows aeroponics orbiting Kerbin. We've also got our other two missions on the way. So it hasn't gotten rid of those either. So let me fly aeroponics. So I need some way to balance the the first stage. I mean, it certainly stayed steady for long enough for me to recover, but that's not really legit. So I'm going to have to work on that. And I think, I mean, there's a number of options. Obviously, we could add just more reaction wheels or uh, maybe an RCS system at the top will be able to, if I carry some RCS fuel, balance it out. Alright, this thing is just... I don't know where it's going to go. That is off, right? For some reason I've had things wandering off in the wrong direction a lot. There's the moon, let's go. There we go. Uh, come on. Come on, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. We're really late. Alright. Lunar transfer complete. Uh, getting a little bit close to this power plant one. Now I have to juggle those two. Let me go back to the tracking station. It looks like the Moon Master is the first one that will get in there. So let's take care of that. Okay, here's the Moon Master 1 with Mike Kerman, and let's just time warp through the transfer to the moon. Power plant and uh, aeroponics will arrive later. But I think they're only like five minutes apart, these two. Okay, here's our encounter. This does not need to worry about rendezvousing with the pumpkin. So I'm just going to get into an arbitrary orbit in preparation for landing. So after we get everything on the surface, we still have to connect the aeroponics and the power plant to the base, which is another trick. And either we're going to use the existing tug, which is not great, this, which would re use a Kerbal Attachment System, which might not be very steady, uh, depending on where we attach the radial attachment point. Or I'm going to create a new tug. So, And this will be a land tug, not a space tug. This, this is a separate space tug that we have to create between Kerbin and the Moon. That is a different tug. Should have a different word except for tug, maybe. Wow, that's a pretty circular orbit for me. Anyway, uh, so yep, yeah, just happened to be that way. And there it is. I'm not going to try and bring it down. We probably do have enough time before these guys get in, but I don't want to risk it. Uh, I want to be at my leisure when trying to bring the, the Moon Master down. So I'm just going to uh, switch to the Beluga. Well, let me not switch here. Let me switch out the tracking station just in case it wants to glitch out. Alright, so I'll be jumping to the blue gun, uh, no, j jumping to the power plant. Okay, the power plant and the aeroponics lab are both approaching the moon now. They're both in the lunar sphere of influence. Uh, but the question is, which one is actually going to get to periapsis first? It's a race. It looks like we are. Alright, that's close enough. 
I want enough time to get to the other mission. I'm gonna have a somewhat elongated orbit, and that's fine because it'll give me a better chance to hit the pumpkin probably. I think I'll keep it there actually. That seems like an okay orbit. Alright, Sam Dunkerman, you and your happy little reactor, Sam Dunkerman is our nuclear physicist here, I guess. Alright, so now quickly jumping to aeroponics. Okay, here we are with the aeroponics lab. It's a lab. Uh, it's, it's all called module, but it's got an agricultural module attached to it. I don't like a module attached to a module, so I'm going to call it aeroponics lab and agricultural module. Okay, my periapsis is going down too much. All right, so didn't quite hit the right timing there, but we are in orbit. Now, got to prioritize which ones I want to do first. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. The Since the Moonmaster is the one that doesn't have to dock up with the pumpkin, I think I'll take care of it first. It's probably the easiest one to get down quickly, and then I'll work from there. So Moonmaster first. Okay, I've got Mike Kerman lined up for a pass at the base. It looks like we're going to be going into the dark side at the base. So actually, probably before bringing the modules down, I'm going to give it some time to work its way around to the daylight side again. But uh, first, let's get the Moonmaster down. I think that's doable before it gets too dark at the location. And of course, the base is lit, so that's not too much of a problem, really. It's just a matter of comfort level. Let me turn off Smart ASS, which is going to deviate. Okay, that's good enough. I want to quickly check our life support situation. Uh, there's no crew in the emergency habitat. That's good. 155 days in this Moon Master. 159 days on Mooner Station 1. Kerbin Station Core has 480 days, one crew. Kerbitat, 73 days. Duna Station, 510 days. The CRT around Duna has 708 days. The Goldbug has uh, 237. And then the power plant has 78 days. So, sure need to get some stuff on the moon in terms of life support. Everything seems to be running on about 70-ish days when it comes to the crude stuff. Okay, let's just uh, give me a retrograde here. Okay, helmet miner set as target. We need to go a little bit south, I think. Looks better. Still want surface speed though. The, turning this thing is tough. Might need RCS on the way down. Of course right now we're carrying the transfer stage as well but still. The transfer stage actually has a reaction wheel so we're gonna lose that so we're actually gonna have less net torque I think. So it's got to be even tougher to keep the keep the Moonmaster level. Okay, coming real close now. Okay, we don't really need to head back up. Let's shorten this out a little bit. I really want to be over the target before decoupling the the transfer module. We'll still be a little bit offset. I'm not going to try and land it close. It is a rover after all. I don't need to get right out there. Just want to make sure that we're past this crater. Really don't need to be landing in there.
Okay, that's acceptable. Let's dump the transfer stage. Come on. All right, now. We would like to control from here. Yeah. Just, you know, for, because I'm used to it more. This thing feels a tad imbalanced. The, the Tal command pod has a lot more torque than this little, uh, little bubble command pod. So the gold bug had a lot more authority when it comes to turning and keeping stable. So that's one downside to this version. But of course you couldn't stick the Tau Command Pod on the front of this. Okay, there goes that stage. Well, feels okay right now. Got a bit more horizontal speed than I like. Well, one thing's for sure, if this something goes wrong with this, it's not going to be able to write itself the way the Tau Command Pod did. Not with this much torque. Okay, RCS back on. Slowing down a bit. Trying to be patient with this. Don't want to burst any tires, though Mike could probably fix them. I'm probably not going to drive this to the base just yet because I want to make sure that I'm not gonna obstruct where the other modules are gonna land I, I just don't want anywhere near it while I'm trying to land the other modules okay we have some lighting whoa okay we're down all right, looking good. RCS off. Wait a minute. I think I've got the wheels on backwards. Yeah, it's steering the opposite direction. Can I reverse these two guys? Okay, uh, yeah, hold on. Park. Wow, this thing does not slow down very easily. Okay, so I need to invert steering. Lighting is a little bit tricky. Nope, it's still not going the way I want it to. Uh, it's just... Okay, the motor is reversed. But the steering is... Well, I guess I can remember that. Let's see, is it all consistent right now? Yeah, okay. It's a very heavy vehicle. Let me just park it for now. All right, uh, I, I want to get at least the reactor attached to the pumpkin in this episode. So let me go jump and do that. We'll leave Mike here. Uh, let's, let's turn off Mike's lights for now, just so that he doesn't draw too much power. Should be all right, but uh, eventually we're gonna leave him on the dark side of the planet because uh, everybody's gonna be on the dark side of the planet. So yeah, wanna save power as much as possible. He's got enough to uh, last through the uh, moon or night time but don't want to tempt fate or anything okay uh, of course he'd recharge immediately on the light daylight time but we don't want him to be out of electricity all right so yep going to going to the, is it should i go from the pumpkin to it or well we'll see all right i'll, I'll take a look at the orbits
Okay, so we've got tons of juice left in the pumpkin, so I think I'm just going to use it to connect up. I keep forgetting that the, I should add some monopropellant to the to the stages that are going to refuel the pumpkin. Uh, it's going to run out of monopropellant eventually, and that's going to be a problem. But for now, I think we're all right. I don't think I'm going to use more than that much monopropellant to dock up. But we've got plenty of Delta V to rendezvous, so I am going to do that sort of thing. Uh, so the power plant in a very high orbit, which is good. And well, I'm just gonna do the normal rendezvous thing. Where are we? So correcting inclination first, and then we'll worry about the rest. Okay, looks like we didn't do it quite at the right point because we ended up with a minimum of 0.5 degrees of relative inclination, but we're gonna have to make further adjustments, so let's continue. Okay, we're within 300 meters, I think. Right, should be okay. Let us meet up with it. Okay, here we go. Too far. All right, Sam and Kerman has done his job. We'll just have to wait for the pumpkin to come to him. Pumpkin needs to flip around, so I'm going to say control from here. For some reason, Smart ASS does not like the pumpkin very well. It's a little bit jerky when it tries to turn it. I think it's the arms. Okay, we seem to be a little bit askew, so I want to jump over to Sam Van Kerman here and get him back lined up with us. Whoa. Oh dear. Hmm. Let's fix this up. Okay, should be okay. Yep. All linked up. Let me transfer fuel quickly and that'll be that. I'm not going to bring it down to the surface just yet because I'll probably want to wait until it's daylight down there. And so we'll call it an episode here. So with all the fuel transferring to the pumpkin, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.